This 2300 year old book on statecraft and war is taught in the US Army War College in Pennsylvania, USA. And no, it's not Sun Tzu's Art of War, it is the Arthashastra. First, we wanted other non-Western -theor non theorists of war beyond Sun Tzu to help our students, you folks, develop a wider aperture about human thought on war. Uh, and so to that end, various of us, including me, were asked, well, who would you add? I said, well, Kautiga, the Arthashastra. I mean, that's where everyone should read it. The Arthashastra was written by Kautilya or Chanakya, who is believed to have been an advisor to Chandragupta Maurya, founder of the Mauryan Empire. It was written in the 3rd century BC at a time of empire formation when large parts of northern India were bound to the single administrative center at Magadh. The story of Arthashastra's popularity begins in 1905 in Mysore. In a musty room full of manuscripts in the Mysore Oriental Library, a man rummaging through a heap of palm leaf manuscripts made a startling discovery that would change how India's history was written. The man was none other than R. Shama Shastri, and what he discovered was a manuscript of the lost Arthashastra of Kautilya. The manuscript written in Sanskrit in the Grantha script had been given to the newly opened library by a Pandit from Tanjore. Shama Shastri would go on to publish the Sanskrit edition of the Arthashastra in 1909 and its English translation in 1915. The book was also translated into French, German and many other languages. In the 1950s, fragments of a North Indian version of Arthashastra were discovered in the form of a Devanagari manuscript in Gujarat. Until its discovery by Shama Shastri, the Arthashastra was believed to be lost and known only through references to it in works of other Sanskrit writers like Dandin and Vishnu Sharma and even the Greek writer Megasthenes. It was believed that India did not have an indigenous school of thought on politics and statecraft and that ancient Indians had borrowed political concepts and ideas from the Greeks. But the discovery of the Arthashastra changed this view. The Arthashastra also dethroned Niccolo Machiavelli's The Prince, a 16th century work as the world's oldest treatise on political philosophy. In fact, German sociologist Max Weber in 1919 said that compared to the Arthashastra, Machiavelli's The Prince was harmless. So what exactly is in the Arthashastra? Arthashastra is a practical instruction manual on statecraft that is addressed to the king and his advisors. It tells the ruler how to govern his territory, how to achieve stability and prosperity, and how to conduct relations with other powers. With over 5,000 passages in total, the text is divided into 15 books, 150 chapters, and 180 topics. The term Vichigishu, meaning the would-be conqueror, regularly appears in the text and this is the ruler who is being addressed by Kautilya. Broadly, Kautilya discusses the qualities of an ideal king, the selection of his ministers and other officials, the training of a crown prince and even the role of the state in keeping the masses happy. Kautilya talks about taxation, state-sponsored and private economic activity, law, courts and the justice system. Administrators, tax collectors, governors and judges keep the state strong. Land produce, forest produce, elephants and mining are also important and are mentioned. Kautilya thus describes not only the bureaucratic state but also its economy. The Arthashastra even dedicates many chapters on spying, propaganda and control of information. Large portions of the text are also dedicated to war and to explain the different types of war and how to engage in them. It also has chapters on diplomacy and realpolitik foreign policy, including the Mandala theory which outlines the functions of different allies and neighbours of the Vijikishu. Shiv Shankar Menon, India's former NSA, once said this about the Arthashastra. In my opinion, the study of Kautilya is one of the significant ways in which we can become more self-conscious and about the strategic culture which we have and in which we can contribute to its evolution. The concepts and even more significantly the ways of thinking that the Arthashastra reveals. This is useful for many reasons. For me personally, I, f I find it's useful because in many ways the world which we face today uh, of multiple states, of several major powers, 
of uh, an uneven but lumpy sort of distribution of power among those major states, even while the system has one predominant military power. And that, that system that we see is similar to the world in which Kautilya operated, Vishnugupta operated when he built the Mauryan Empire into greatness. What we have is since Kautilya's time, you have uh, a multiplication of theories about politics, international relations, use of force and so on. But politics itself has not changed that much. It's interesting when you go back to the Arthashastra and that might explain why the Arthashastra or rather Chanakya Niti is so integral to our strategic culture. But the Arthashastra isn't all about kings and how to rule a kingdom. It also talks about divorce and infidelity, inheritance laws, courtesans, the maintenance of cities and villages and a variety of other things. In the process, the text gives us valuable insight into the lives of Indians 2000 years ago. Now where is this treasure of a manuscript today? A 2019 report revealed that the Arthashastra manuscript was decaying due to poor storage conditions and that this significant part of Indian history may be lost forever. Then in 2020, steps were taken to preserve and digitize several of the manuscripts in the Oriental Research Institute. When preserved and studied properly, such manuscripts tell us that not only was Indian society of that era wealthy and sophisticated in many ways, it also had a real investment in intellectual capital. You could write down all your knowledge and wisdom in Sanskrit and compose a treatise, a Shastra, to capture all that your civilization has come to realize. And the Arthashastra is possibly the greatest intellectual output that came out of India at that time.